Hey everyone, my name is Joe and this is episode 3 of the Godot typing game tutorial. In this video we're going to learn how to randomize the prompts that appear below an enemy, how to scale our game's difficulty progressively over time, and then how to tune what that scaling looks like to find the right balance for the player. Let's get started. So the first thing that I want to do is actually take you through a couple changes I made off camera. So one thing I did was just grouped our spawn nodes a little bit closer together uh, just so they would be a little bit farther from the edge of the screen. And then on our enemy, I actually rotated it and made the sprite just a little bit smaller uh, so that it didn't take up as much room. But most importantly is I started working on this prompt list. And this is what we're gonna use to generate randomized prompts for the player to type. And so I've got two variables now. One is just an array of words, which I just <laughs> Googled uh, typing uh, practice test and then copy and pasted all of the words and put them in here. And then I have just an array of a couple special characters. So I need to actually make the function now that will get us a prompt. So we'll do that together. I'll do func get prompt. This is going to return a string. And what we're going to do uh, is first we need to get two random indices from each of these lists. So we'll say var uh, word index. And this is going to be randy modulo words dot size. And we're going to do the same thing for our special characters now. So I'll do special index and we'll do special characters dot size. So now we're going to have two indices for both of those. And now we need to get our var um, word and we will say words of word index. Same thing for our special characters. And I'll say special, oops, special character. And we will do special characters and special index. That sounds kind of weird to say, but okay. So now what we can do is just return word plus special character and this should be good except for one thing um so this list is all lowercase words uh just because i didn't want to go through and manually change all of them and in the future it'd be nice like if you wanted to expand on this game not to have to worry about it and so if you're a game that is only going to do uppercase or only lowercase you don't have to worry about this but i'll show you how to force your first letter to be uppercase even if the rest of your word is not just in case that's a use case you want to do. So something that we can do here, instead of just adding our word, is we can say var actual word, and we can do uh, word, whoops, dot wad, word dot substring uh, from zero, length of one. So take the first character and say two upper, and then we can add word dot substring, and then we can do just one. And so this will take our first character from our word, put it to uppercase, and then this will take the rest of our word um, starting at index one. And if you don't provide that second parameter, or if you provide negative one, same thing, it'll just get the rest of the word. And then just to force that we're always going to be lowercase, we can also do two lower. Again, not necessary here, but we'll do it just to show. And now I can change this to be actual word. And now we'll have a word that we're generating, or a prompt that we generate that has a capital first letter, lowercase for the rest, and is going to have a special character at the end. Okay, so let's add this now as an auto load. So I can come up to project settings, auto load. I'll open the path selector, hit prompt list, add, and it just should work from there. And now we'll need to go into our enemy script actually and add. Uh, functionality to get a prompt. So I think we'll just hook into the ready function for that. So function ready. And then what we're gonna do is say prompt text equals prompt list dot get prompt. So we're gonna set our prompt text to be equal to a randomly generated prompt. And then to make sure it actually uh, displays that, we will say prompt dot parse bb code uh, and we'll set it to parse tag or prompt text. Now we're gonna make sure that we don't forget the center tags here. And because we're already doing that down here, I'm gonna add another helper that'll just do center tags for us. So function um, set center tags, and this will take a, uh, we'll just say string, whoops, to center. 
Um, as a side note, sometimes it's annoying to type longer names. Well, it, it absolutely is annoying to type longer names, but it's definitely better as your code gets bigger to have longer names that are maybe a bit annoying to type, but that make total sense about what they do. Uh, as you you know keep growing and you have to come back to code you haven't touched in a while. So sometimes if you see me type names that are really long and annoying like this, um, this is definitely longer than it needs to be, but I just like to make it clear what the names of functions mean and or, or variables and what they're doing. So that is just a brief explanation why. But for this, we will do return center plus string to center plus and center tag and like I said we're doing a lot of pretty inefficient string manipulation and building in here so just uh, ignore that for now and you can do that later on your own and fix that if you need to so we'll say set center tags here so we'll actually be building that here and right here okay so we're gonna use our new uh, function to set our center tags for the actual text we're building up there and we're gonna do that at the beginning as well in our ready, we're going to say set center tags. And here we're just going to set to prompt text. Okay, there we go. Now, if I run this, we should see uh, new enemies get spawned with words from our list and with some kind of a punctuation mark uh, and a capital letter. So if I start typing, we'll see that it works. Whoops, something began night question mark mean Ah, oh, this is great. I love this. Ah, oh, guys, this is so cool. Look at what we've got. We've got a real game that's actually generating uh, words and prompts, and it's random, uh, and it looks good. Now, the next thing that we probably want to do is start adding difficulty so that our enemies will move a little bit faster, they'll spawn a little bit quicker, just to kind of make the game more exciting and get a little bit more frantic. So the first thing we're going to need to increase difficulty is to come into our main and we're going to add another timer and we're just going to call this difficulty timer. I'm going to start with a time of 10 seconds. So every 10 seconds, uh, the game will have a difficulty tick, which will bump the difficulty up. And I'm going to do a connection for a timeout signal onto our main script. And then here, what we're going to do is add another variable, which I'm just going to call difficulty. And this will be an integer. We'll just set it to be one at the start. And I'm going to do uh, difficulty plus equals one. I'm also going to add a global signal called difficulty increased. So I'm going to come into our file system. I'm going to add a new script. And whenever I make uh, like a global uh, an auto load. I like to prefix it with global. I didn't do it with the prompt list because it's kind of a pretty focused thing, but usually I'll do some like global signals just to be explicit about where it's coming from. Typically, if I can avoid it, I really try to avoid uh, global signals. It's fine to use globals for certain like enums or different things, but it just, it gets a little hairy uh, and it pollutes the global namespace. And it usually indicates, usually when you do something globally, there's sometimes better ways to do it sometimes global signals are the best way to do it but anyway so we'll have a uh, difficulty increased uh, new difficulty signal and so whenever we increase the difficulty we're going to fire the signal and then whatever needs to listen to that can do it to increase the difficulty so i'm going to go to our project oh, whoops project again do another auto load select uh, global signals and we'll just add global signals, close that. And what I can do now is in main, we can say global signals dot emit signal difficulty increased and the new difficulty will be difficulty. And so now the things that we need to do are to uh, one, prob or we're gonna wanna bump our spawn timers wait time down. So I kind of want this to be a game that you could theoretically play for a bit. So we're going to bump it down incrementally. So we'll say spawn timer dot wait time. And we will uh, say minus equals, let's just do 0 0.2. So every uh, five ticks, it will go down a second. That might not be enough. We'll kind of see again and feel it out. But we'll do that. Um, I'm not totally sure actually offhand 
what happens with wait time if a timer is in progress. Like if we had two seconds left, for example, and we decrease the wait time by uh, 0.2, I don't. I think it would just affect the next time the timer started, but we shall see. Uh, so let's do this. I'm I'm gonna just print for now. Uh, difficulty increased two. We'll do percent D. I'll do percent here. We'll say difficulty. And then the next thing we want to do is actually make our enemies move a little bit faster. So we are going to, in our ready function, say uh, connect, uh, whoops, global signals connect. And we're going to do difficulty increase. We will say self, and uh, we will just say handle difficulty increase, which is a function we'll make right now. So I'll come right here, say function handle difficulty, whoops difficulty increased and we know that we need uh, one variable here or one parameter which will be the new difficulty and we will use this to say uh, let's just say speed plus equals uh, let's do 0 0.2 again and so we can see how this works what I'm gonna do is actually set our difficulty timer to be one second right now so we can see just that progression and we'll see how this feels Okay, actually, before I run this, uh, I'm noticing I forgot to set our timer to auto start, so let's do it. And let's actually uh, clamp our speed variable. So I'm going to say var new speed, and we'll just say it's equal to speed plus 0 0.2. And then we will say speed equals clamp, and we will say new speed, and we'll set the minimum to be um, current speed and the maximum to, let's just set the maximum to be two right now. So it can't get too fast. And uh, let's then go into, uh, let's let's set three, just, just to be crazy. Let's go into our main and do kind of the same thing when we do our wait time. And let's clamp um, our wait time to be, here one sec. So let's say var new, whoops, new wait. Time equals spawn timer dot wait time. And again, let's just do minus 0 0.2. And then we will say spawn timer dot wait, whoops, wait time equals clamp. This will be new wait time. And then we'll say spawn timer dot wait time. And uh, so right now our spawn timer is at five seconds. Um, we, oh, I messed the order of this up, but our spawn time is at five seconds. We probably don't want it to spawn any faster than maybe one second. So let's start by saying our minimum will be one and our maximum will be the value we just had there. We don't really care about the maximum, but you just have to include it in clamp. So let's try that. And we've still got our timer set to be one second. So we'll just kind of see how much more difficult it gets uh, pretty quickly. Okay, so now if we run this, we'll see our difficulty is increasing, and yeah, our our ships are definitely getting faster. Not by a crazy amount, but but definitely a, a significant amount. And this is actually, yeah, this is pretty good. Um, let's see. So, whoops. Oh, I didn't finish. Ooh, whoops. Uh, okay, yeah, I think this is good. Like, it definitely, near the end, our spawn rates get a little ridiculous, but this is good. It gets kind of frantic, and I think if we bump our difficulty timer back up to 10, this will feel pretty good. But wow, look at how many of these there are. That is insane. Oh, gosh. Okay, so you might have noticed a bug in that, too, where our enemies always started out the same speed and then increased their speed over time, and the reason is because... Uh, our enemies always spawned with this 0.5 value. Even though we were increasing it here, this was only relative to what they started with. It's not increasing the overall enemy speed like we want. So the way we can do that is actually multiply our gain by our new difficulty. So then we're always, whenever there's a difficulty tick, we're always gonna be setting our speed to be relative to our new difficulty right from the start. And we'll also need to do this when we spawn in an enemy just because uh, this this tick might not happen for you know 10 seconds so in order to do that uh, we'll just add kind of like a set difficulty so set difficulty um, we'll just say uh, difficulty which is just being injured 
and here we'll just kind of do the same thing. I can just call into the same function here with our difficulty. And then we'll just need to make sure we call this whenever we spawn an enemy. So in main, when we do spawn enemy, I can just say, uh, let's just do it up here. Um, I'll say enemy instance that set difficulty and we'll just pass in difficulty. So now our enemies right from the start should be uh, moving at the correct speed based on what our current difficulty is. So the last big change I want to make is to actually make sure that our spawn time and our enemy movement scale in difficulty linearly. And what that means is deciding how many ticks of difficulty increasing are we going to allow in the game before we hit max difficulty. So right now if we look at our spawn time, we start at a wait time of 5 and we go down to 1. So we have a difference of 4 seconds that we're losing. If we decrement by 0.2 each time, that gives us 20 ticks until we go from the starting speed or the starting spawn time to one. So if we try and aim for 20 ticks as our max difficulty, I need to reflect that also in our enemy speed to make sure that they scale linearly and they both hit max difficulty at the same time. So right now we're using 0.2, which is higher than we want it to be because we, uh, we only have a gap of, we have a gap of 2.5 here as opposed to four, which we had before. So if we do the math and try and find a number where our starting speed of 0.5 uh, then added to something multiplied by 20 equals 3, which is going to be our max speed, we'll find 0.125 to be the number that we want to increment our speed by each difficulty tick. So if we change this to be 0.1, whoops, 1, 2, 5. Uh, now we will see our speed and our spawn time hit max difficulty at the same time. The other thing we want to do uh, is we currently have our difficulty to be one by default and go from there, but we actually want to start it as zero so that when it increases, we'll be adding one here um, so that the first difficulty tick, it'll be 0.125 times one and add that, etc. So if I come into our main, I'll set our difficulty to start at zero and then it'll still increment as normal. And now if we run this and watch, we should see our speed and our spawn time, spawn time, excuse me, continue to increase as our difficulty hits zero. And once our tick hits 20, um, we might still increase our difficulty, but it's not actually gonna change our gameplay. And so we'll see that our spawn time is picking up, our enemies are moving faster. And right about now we've hit max difficulty. And look at that, they're all moving a lot quicker. We're spawning very consistently every second. And this is awesome, this feels really good. Uh, now if we spread this difficulty out to you know 20 ticks that are at 10 seconds or something rather than having it really quickly at one second like we have it now it'll feel really good and feel like the game is getting progressively harder for the player which is exactly what we want